Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Third Hour of Power. My name is Grady of This Mormon Life, and with me once again is Parker Jacobs. Parker, thank you so much for joining me once again. I'm so glad to be here again. <laughs> so Parker was with us last week, so if you missed it, go back and listen to it, because it is a great episode. But this week we are on Chapter 22 of the Joseph Fielding Smith Manual, and in the Third Hour of Power we talk about the lessons from the teachings of the presidents of the church. And we've only got a few lessons left. It's a funny thing. There are typically 24 lessons that you would have if there are two lessons per month, but the manual has 26 lessons in it. And so I don't know what their plan was there, um, but we're going to try and do all 26 for you and have them out hopefully by the end of the month so that if you as a, as a presidency decides to change it up, Maybe exclude one lesson and add one of the end ones in there, because I think one is like on Christmas, which is a nice lesson to have. Um, we'll make sure that you guys are totally covered. So if there's one that you, uh, you're ready, getting ready to have earlier, let us know. Maybe we can adjust the schedule a bit. But until then, right now you're listening to Chapter 22, which is Prayer, a Commandment and a Blessing. Yeah. And it talks about, um, here from the life of Joseph Fielding Smith, about a prayer that he gave when his first wife died. And I... I love it. I love the idea of our prophets sometimes being being poets. You know, you look through, you know, Parker, have you ever noticed as you look through the hymn book how many of our hymns are written by prophets or apostles? Yeah, it's incredible. And I, and I like yeah. hearing this prayer that he writes. Uh, he says, Oh, my Father in heaven, help me, I pray thee, to, to so live that I shall be worthy to meet her in eternal glory, to be united with her again, never again to be separated through the countless ages of eternity, help me be humble to trust in thee. And I think what a heartfelt thing to realize because his wife passed away very young. Um, and here he was a single father with all these kids to take care of, you know, and that was his, his, his desire was to be able to be with her again and, and the, try and find that hope, that comfort that comes um, through the Holy Spirit that we, we can gain when we pray. Yeah, I think it, it's beautiful to see this other different dimension of a prophet as a dad. Yeah. And you know, in, in section one here, it talks about how we can, uh, we're commanded to draw near to Heavenly Father in prayer. And I love the uh, the image that you see in the manual. And it's this, this mother teaching your son to pray. And it says that it's the duty of parents to teach their children to pray as soon as they commence to understand. Uh, and I think as parents, it's it's essential. We've really been trying to help with our children um, to be able to understand what prayer is and to be able to kind of have that outline, you know, in their lives. And, you know, even our baby who's one, you know, she knows that when it's time to pray, you know, she puts her hands together, you know, and she kind of looks around and see what everyone else is doing. But it's interesting because the way that she prays, she puts her hands together, but that's not the way any of us pray in the family. Um, and it's just interesting that she just understands that, you know, this is a solemn time, and as, life, as time goes on and we continually pray as a family, um, I know that she's going to get a better understanding of what it is we're doing and, and eventually being able to do it on her own. Yeah, I love that. Serving in primary, seeing, seeing the way little kids pray, or in the nursery, the same way. <laughs> They're like, okay, it's prayer time. All right, we fold our arms, and they, they go for it. Is there a way, Parker, is it easy to see which, par which parents or which kids are, are learning prayer at home and which ones aren't? Oh yeah, totally. But um, but we got a good bunch. <laughs> you know, a lot of them are like, okay. Prayer time. We'll stop talking. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there was um, one of the things that we've been really trying to do. Um, I talked last week about our state president who was talking about return missionaries and kind of the activity rate um, that return missionaries have, and he was giving tips for them to be able to retain um, their activity in the church and to be dedicated. One of the things that he talked about was to continue, continue to have revelatory prayer. Mm. And that, you know, prayer isn't just a one-way communication, but that we need to have our children know that they don't pray just because it's time to eat, but they pray also to get answers. And one of the things that we've been doing with our children, my wife mostly, is that when things are lost, is the idea of asking Heavenly Father to help them find it. And I remember when we came and visited Arizona, um, a few months back, my middle son, Grayson, he's diabetic. And so it's essential that we always have his diabetes supplies with us because if you've ever seen steel magnolias, it can go south pretty fast. Yeah. Um, 
if you're you know if you're if you're thirty or under thirty, you've never seen that. Just look it up; it's pretty good. Um, but with him, we were on a, a trip, and we were you know four hundred miles from home, and all of a sudden he can't find his diabetes supplies, he can't find his blood test, he can't find his insulin, and we don't know if our insurance would work here to get you know to get things replaced. And he's just he's just nervous and he's scared and he's he's asking me, Dad, what do I do? You know, I said, what do you think you should do? You know, and, and he says, I need to pray. And so he said, okay. And he's, gosh, I think he's six at the time. So he folds his arms. And it was just so interesting because it wasn't like, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. But it was just, I need your help. I can't find my insulin. Please, please help me. Um, and it was that simple, you know. And then he says, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And all of a sudden he looks down and he goes, oh, here it is. And it was, it was <laughs> literally at his feet. Um, and I don't know, you know, I... I don't know what it was or how it worked out that way, but I know that as a result of that experience, his faith was strengthened. He learned that he can ask Heavenly Father for help and that Heavenly Father will hear him and give him those answers. And I think it's so important for us as parents that we start that that with our children, but also to have that in our own lives as well. Yeah, you know, in the, this last month's um, uh, First presidency message. Uh, Elder Iring was talking about prayer. That was the that was the topic, and and how true prayer needs to be, you know, not just us talking to Heavenly Father, but us listening too. And um, I thought that was um, uh, kind of important because I I reflect on the way I'm just throwing it out there and then saying Amen. You know, but uh, we do need to listen. Yeah, and I think too it goes on here in the lesson that. You know, that we should be, what we pray for should model how we act. Mm -hmm. um, and I love, one of my favorite prayers in the, in the scriptures is King Lamoni's father, who has presented the gospel, and he wants to know if it's true. And I love that he says, you know, oh God, if there is a God, help, you know, basically help me to know if you're real. And help me to know if the things that Aaron is teaching me are true. And I think, you know, first, what a sign of faith. You know, to be a king of all of the land and to get on your knees and speak to some unseen being. I mean, right there is such an exercise of our faith. And whenever we pray and we address our Heavenly Father, it's a way for us to show our faith for Him. But then once we do that, to then go and act, you know, likewise. When we say, you know, we need help with whatever it is we're in need of, we need to make sure that we go out and then work and do the things that we can do to help and then expect those promised blessings. Yeah, there's there's a. It, it's really interesting how it's the responsible thing to do to put the responsibility in uh, Heavenly Father's hands. You know the way how he's saying, you know, uh, if you exist, I, I'm there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> saying, oh, oh God, if you know, just just being able to to put that much trust in in the Lord. Um, and it is, it's the responsible thing. It's, it's being childlike and saying, okay, I'll, I'll do whatever it, it takes. I'm, I'm the one who's, uh, you know, at the wheel. You just tell me where to, where to go, you know, and, uh, that's really beautiful. Yeah. You know, I like here also talks about in this lesson in Alma, it talks about all the things to pray for about, you know, over your flocks and over your fields, um, over all the things that you know that you're in need of, you know, uh, Parker, I, I know that you and your wife have kind of seen the hand of the Lord a lot of times in your in your family. Yes, yeah. Um, oh, it's breaking up again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been incredible. I, in the, the past. Um, the past two years, we've always almost been married. It's two years this month. Um, there have been some just incredible uh, trials that we've gone through trying to piece together a family with six kids, and uh, me having, you know, ha having uh, uh, been on hiatus with Yo Gabba Gabba, it's caused a lot of financial problems. Um, essentially, have been unemployed for. A couple of years now, and um, uh, that mixed up with uh, you know all these other things, um, it's it's made every month has been so difficult, and it has just really forced us to get on our knees 
and 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 truly we're crying about our flocks but it's not our flocks it's our <laughs> you know it's it's our money it's our children um and and uh sometimes i like to just go with the flow and know that um well heavenly father just he uh he knows what i need but that's not what we need to do we need to really um verbalize what we need to identify it for not just for him he knows but for us to be able to um it's it's almost like goal setting <laughs> once you verbalize <laughs> it then then you know where it needs to go and for some reason you know the heavenly father has always you know pulled us through these tough times that we've been going through and i'm sure that's everybody yeah well i think just just as important of knowing what you need to do but knowing where where that blessing then comes from when you can say i asked for this and logic tells me i shouldn't get it but because i prayed i know that my heavenly father has blessed me with it and yeah. being able to recognize that he is the source of those blessings and not just say well we needed it and there it was so that was neat <laughs> you know yeah it's funny you know, to realize it's, i always that. think of that that uh, that joke of the the guy that was working on his roof and he you know he's sliding off his roof and he's falling and he's falling and he starts praying and he says, Heavenly Father, please help me. If you save my life, you know, I'm going to dedicate my life to Jesus and I'm going to repent and I'm going to change all these things. And then, you know, once he says that, he gets, you know, caught by a nail that saves his life. And then he, then he you know, calls back up to heaven and he's like, oh, I got it this time. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what I just said. You know? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's okay. I got it. And sometimes we are like that. Um, and it, we have to really continuously, um, I mean, the Lord answers my prayers without even me acknowledging it so many times. And we need to take time to pray. I know uh, a lot of times we'll, we'll say a family blessing on, you know, on the food uh, all the time. You know, we'll get together <laughs> and say a blessing on the food. We're grateful for this food. But what about when your ship comes in? What about when you get that that check that you're needing to to pay rent? Let's have a family prayer for Thanksgiving, or you know, or whatever you need. You know, what you've been praying for, like um, anything that's that's coming through for you. Um, let's take that time out as a, as a family or individually to to stop and thank the Lord for what yeah. we've been doing. And I, I love, I saw Meet the Mormons um, with about uh, a bunch of other Mormons that were there probably. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the, the things that I love is they, you know, they interview the coach for the Navy football team, college football team. And he talks about how, you know, people say, you know, why would, you know, about praying for football games and how, you know, God doesn't care about, you know, football. And uh -huh. he says, you know, God might not care about football, but he cares about me. And he knows that me doing a good job at work helps him to provide for my family. And that when I do a good job and, and my team wins, then I'm able to better prepare or take care of my family and, and bless them. And so, you know, although he might not care if Navy wins or loses, he cares if I can take care of my family and he cares about those things. And I think, you know, this, this month, you know, at work, you know, I've had goals to meet and it's been hard. And it's been such a strength for me to know that, you know, my wife and my kids have been at home. When I'm working late, they're at home praying that dad can can hit his goals and come home. Um, and it's just been such a strength to know that, you know, Heavenly Father is there for me. You know, that I can I can rely on him and I can trust him. Um, and that there's blessings that come. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, is that uh, my wife and I, in our, in our hardships uh, lately, sometimes we felt that... Uh, that you know this is really naive of us but but sometimes we feel like we have um uh we've used up all of our all of our prayer tokens <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. we've, we've asked for so much and why do i have to ask again this month you know and then it, what pulls me through is like i think well okay he may have blessed me enough um but i know that he wants my children to survive I know he wants my boys to serve missions. You know, I know he 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 wants to bless them, whether or not it's for me. So, so <laughs> then my prayers can can be for my kids, and I'll say, please help us. You know, help them. 
so that, you know, bless us so that we may help them, uh, not for our, ourselves, but for our, you know, for our children. And that's, I know that's kind of ridiculous um, because, because we know that Heavenly Father is a loving Father that wants to bless His children and their children as well. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I always joke about how I, you know, I think I, I hitched my wagon to the right horse where, you know, my wife is awesome and she's good, you know, and I think, you know, I might not deserve these blessings, Heavenly Father, but she does. Exactly. And unfortunately, <laughs> I fooled her into marrying me. And so <laughs> we, I need help to make sure that I can measure up and to make sure that, you know, she gets what she deserves. And so in order for that to happen, I need a little bit of help to be better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly my point. That's <laughs> well, Parker, is there anything else you want to add for this lesson? Um, no, I just that I mean, it it is so so uh, so important to be thankful in our prayers and to really spill it out, even if it gets monotonous. We just we got to really lay out um, what we need. And to be able to listen, I guess. I guess no. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect culmination. And uh, and Parker, for those who who missed it last week, um, where can people find out more about what you do on the internet? Um, well, you can find out the art of Parker Jacobs, which I, I do have a blog, but I'm also all on Facebook, and I have a series of children's books that are coming out called Goon Holler, Goon Holler Guidebook, and Welcome to Goon Holler, which will be out. Uh, November 22nd or November 18th and we're having a book signing November 22nd in Huntington Beach, California at the Barnes and Noble there at Bella Terra. Um, so yeah, you can find me there. I'm on Twitter. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Are um, you still doing your Vine videos? Yeah, I'm doing Vines. Uh, I, I almost got, I'm nearing 30,000 followers. Um, on That's kind of big. Um, yeah. on, on Vine, um, where you won't ever see my face, though. You see my puppet. <laughs> uh, doing it. We hear your but, voice, uh, though. Yeah, it's my voice. Hey, how's it going? It's Tuba. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear that, Parker? <laughs> what? Tuba what? was just on the podcast. Oh, where, where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and, you know, and my kids love that stuff. I mean, and that's the thing. That's the thing I think is so much fun is that it's, you know, it, with, 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 you know, Yo Gabba Gabba. You know, some parents don't like it as much, but, you know, especially with the Aquabats and with, with, with Goon Hauler, you know, it's stuff that the whole family can get into and stuff that, you know, I enjoy doing with my kids and sharing with them. And so I, I appreciate what you do. Well, thank you. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's such a blessing to be able to do that. Yeah. I can tell, I can tell you're having a good time with it. Um, but for everyone else, we'll have links to those things in the show notes that you can find over at This Week in Mormons. Um, also, if you find, um, all of us on Facebook. My uh, my website is www.this-mormon-life.com, um, which you can also find links to their post that has the show notes. So either way, you're going to end up there because we are so grateful for them for helping us to distribute this podcast and, uh, and to put it out for the masses. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. I'm having a lot of fun with Instagram. Uh, and getting creative so I love these tools that help us to share goodness and especially with this podcast let me better myself and get ready for the third hour of church and hopefully it's helping you as well um, and if it is go ahead and rate us go over to, to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen and just write a quick blurb say that we did a good job um, don't want to start with that one that makes sad but give us five stars and say yay <laughs> No, no, stars. no stars. Go big and go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and then, until next time, I'm on behalf of Parker Jacobs, my name is Randy Kerr of This Mormon Life, and until next time, we bid you all a fond adieu.